CNN is one of the most disgusting news sites I have ever seen in the world of journalism. It is finally time to talk about how there is a rise in COVID cases. Let's get into this video. We're going to go into their newest video and just... Ugh. Let's turn to the coronavirus pandemic, which clearly continues as the number of confirmed cases here in the United States is now approaching 2 million. The World Health Organization is saying uh, that uh, it had yesterday was the largest single day rise in coronavirus cases ever. Really? CNN national correspondent Erica Hill has the latest. This is a triumphant moment for New Yorkers who fought back against this disease. This was the epicenter. Today, New York City marks a major milestone, phase one of reopening. R really? A milestone? Really? Oh, wow. Was that that milestone killing off people in um, old folks' homes by putting people with the virus in there? Construction can resume at more than 30,000 sites. There's curbside pickup for retail. Oh, it's fantastic. Some 400,000 people expected to be back on the job. Many commuting by train or bus. Subway riders reminded to wear a mask and try to keep their distance. The city also says it will conduct 30... So they can be told that they have to wear a mask. And that's really, really important, is controlling the subway. Then why did it take New York almost a month into the pandemic to say, hey, maybe we should uh, clean our subway every once in a while? 5,000 tests a day. Overall, New York State and much of the Northeast trending down when it comes to new cases over the past week. New Yorkers bent the curve by being smart. The death toll is slowing across the country. Yet in a dozen states, deep red on the map, there is a sharp increase. Overall, new cases are up in 22 states. In okay, so before we go any further, I want you to... See something real quick. The death toll is slowing across the country. Yet in a dozen states, deep red on the map, there is a sharp... Okay, so... I want you to notice, uh, I know this is backwards, and I know it's really hard to see, but you can see California right there. And that says it's steady because it's yellow. I'm sure there's not going to be any sort of of contradictory statements in this. Increase. Overall, new cases are up in 22 states, including Florida, which added more than 1,000 cases a day for mm -hmm. five straight days last week. Arizona, California, Texas, and Michigan also on the rise. Oh. Oh, wait. Wait, California's on the rise too? Really? Really? I... Oh, wait, I thought they were steady. So which one is a lie? And I want you to notice that California, Michigan, and Arizona, they're pretty big blue states. And I don't I don't know how many is I don't know how Michigan, excuse me, does this. I really don't know. I really don't know how they can say that they are the people that are fighting for good things that are going to fix the coronavirus, and yet they are having the most cases. They're having more cases. From what I understand, this number is based off of individual numbers. If you look at it, Michigan has like... That's like... Three to four times what California has. Do you understand how much bigger California is than Michigan? All right, let's keep going. While testing is up, so is the number of people who are out. The TSA screened more than 400,000 people on Friday and Saturday, the most in nearly three months. Where are we? And you wonder why the cases are up. This is what 
is going to happen. We have been talking about this for two months. People are trying to reopen the economy. And therefore, when you reopen, of course, there's going to be an increase in cases. But there are people who are smart and say, hey, there's going to be massive death when we reopen. Whether we do it rapidly or slowly over time. So if we're going to have the same amount of death, why don't we go ahead and look at which is more beneficial to the economy. And that is opening ASAP. We've seen areas that have significantly increased have been areas that either one are very popular for a lot of people to flock to um, or areas that opened up very early. The CDC really? warning large gatherings, including protests, could put people at risk. For me, the moment that I chose to protest, I was willing to die for this. Okay. What do you say? What are you supposed to say? Huge increases in cases, people willing to die for it. You think this is more about reopening? Or the fact that half of our country was burned to the ground in the last two weeks? That's the mentality. I guarantee you that this girl was the same exact girl that was saying, that was saying stay home because you're killing people if you're getting within six feet of them. Officials urging protesters to get tested. A third of the new cases in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, announced on Saturday, were traced to one person who attended several beach house gatherings on the New Jersey shore. Excellent, excellent. So now, so, so we can't find any cases that are across the board for beaches being reopened. So now we're going to go to anecdotal evidence because anecdotes are great apparently. No. At at least six colleges, including Texas Tech and Auburn, reporting athletes who returned to campus have tested positive. Many were asymptomatic. How many COVID cases will we accept to have our college football this fall? Tough questions as Americans decide what they're willing to risk for a return to normal. All right, and now they're going to go to, you know, the doctor who's going to say, wash your hands, stay home, blah, 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 blah. Folks, this is journalism today. Anecdotal evidence. Information that contradicts what it literally said 30 seconds ago. And a total lack of understanding what's actually happening. And now...